Well, good night. Uh, welcome to the Comebol Copa America US uh, 2024 press conference. We are with the coach Jesse Marsh of the Canadian team. Before we start, please note that it's not allowed to broadcast or record with cell phone or any, uh, any devices. Remember, you can download the press conference in the QR code. If you have a question, please raise your hand and wait for the microphone to be handed to you. Prior to the question, introduce yourself with your name and media. The stats on the phone, please. Hi, uh, Jesse. Um, you, you seemed a bit upset on the TV footage at half time. You showed you being uh, rather animated. Could you could you tell us what that was about? And and also, um, the pitch seemed like very very wet at the start. Was that abnormally over over soaked, or, or is it just looking weird upstairs? Yeah, I, I was okay at halftime. I was just trying to um, push our guys. Uh, to be ready for the second half. And then, yeah, I thought the pitch was okay. It's a little soft, but I thought it played fine. I thought that was okay. Fernando Cis de Dispo Radio y de Doble Amarilla, I will ask you in Spanish. Eh, Jesse, eh, comparando el partido, de la, la, el partido inaugural y este, ¿cuál que cree usted que hizo mejor Canadá y qué cree que falló para perder los dos encuentros frente a la Argentina? Gracias. Yeah, I think, um, look, I think, first of all, Scaloni had a good match plan, the way he used Messi to find space uh, under behind our midfield line, and we had a little bit of trouble dealing with that in the first half. Um, but, you know, we, we weren't, it wasn't as easy to slice through our team as it was the first game, so I thought that we were more stable um, defensively. But, you know, I, th I think that the the tournament caught up with us a little bit. You know, I looked at Argentina rotated a lot of players throughout the tournament so that they were kind of using different players at different moments so that um, they weren't calling on the same players every match. And there's been heat, there's been travel, there's been a lot of challenges. And so what I, you know, even what I said to the team is one of the best developments for us from this match is I thought that guys like Ali Ahmed, uh, Mathieu Chonier, um, Uh, Tanny comes on and a few few players come on and and give good performances. And in the end, we're still in the beginning of our process, right? The Argentina's maybe had eight years together, seven years together with this team. And so we need to develop more players to that can contribute so that we can also rotate in tournament play because eventually the physicality and the 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 fatigue can catch up with you. And that's that was a big part of uh of what happened with us tonight. Joshua Cloak, The Athletic. Jesse, can you just elaborate on the decision to sub off Jonathan David and Stefan Estacchio? Was that more just about the game itself or was that just a big picture plan to get guys like Tanny and, and Matthew really, really critical minutes? Yeah, that, I think both. I think they were, I could see that both were physically at their limit. Um, you know, they've invested, all the players have invested so much mentally, physically. So I didn't, You know, I felt at the time that I wanted to get some fresh legs in the pitch and and give those other players an opportunity. So that was a big part of it. You know, it, it, obviously, if Jonathan and Steph are, are at their best, they're always a big help to the team. So that was a, just trying to get some fresh legs on the pitch. Hey, Jesse, Paul Tenorio from The Athletic. You know, you talk about the beginning phase with this group. Um, what does it mean to, to have been on this stage, to play in this game, to, to play against a team like Argentina in an atmosphere like this in terms of developing for a tournament two years time that is going to be in your, your home country in Canada? Yeah, I think in general, what I said to the team afterwards is I know that they're very disappointed, but I'm very proud of them. You know, we've put together um, some incredible performances, um, you know, just starting our process, like I said, we need to, we need to find a way to expand our player pool. Um, we need to, to continue to challenge our group to come together and be able to perform in moments like this. But in general, um, 
we've had a, a, a wonderful five weeks together, six weeks together, and, and it's gone way better than any of us could have scripted. So there's still a lot of work to do, but we've, we've built a really good foundation and I'm really optimistic about what the future can look like. Jesse Ben Steiner, MLS, what does it mean to uh, having played, you know, the max amount of games that you can play in a tournament like this in terms of preparation for 26? Yeah, it's, I, I, I've been saying for a few weeks that it'll be hard when we're all done to say goodbye because I've really enjoyed the process with this team and I think we've made a lot of progress together. Um, and every moment we have together, that's what I said to him. When we train, every training moment, I, I don't just split up teams and run things in training. I'm trying to really build and develop every single player in this pool so that we can we can have a real 26-man squad when it comes to 2026. So um, the match on Saturday will also be vital for that because we'll make some changes. We'll get some some new faces on the pitch and challenge them to be able to, to see if they can hold up in these kinds of matches. Hola. Jesse, pregunto en español. Sí. Eh, Bastián Guiñez Escobar, para Independencia Hispana de Selección Medio de Chile. Eh, dos preguntas. La primera, si siente que a su equipo quizás le faltó más instinto asesino en el último tramo de la cancha para poder definir algunas jugadas y equilibrar el marcador en ciertos puntos del partido. Y la segunda, se le vio hoy día discutiendo mucho con todo el equipo arbitral. Eh, ¿Cómo evalúa el desempeño del referee el día de hoy? Y si siente que quizás la nacionalidad del árbitro, al haber habido polémicas en el partido de Canadá-Chile, influyó el día de hoy. Yeah, I'm not going to speak about the the referee. Um, and then, yeah, we one of the things that we lacked this you called it a killer instinct. You could you could say this, um, but I think we just lacked efficiency in the final third. I mean, every match we created big chances, and if we could have been a little bit cleaner in some of these moments, then then maybe we'd have a few more leads in the tournament. And then even even then, you know, if we can get a lead earlier in, uh, against Peru, against Chile, we could you know we could put a few chances away. Then maybe we can also save legs. And but. You know, that part will have to continue to, to build. Um, but there's so many positives about the last weeks. Jeremy Falosa, 98.5 FM in Montreal. Jesse, thanks for taking the time. Um, I know you got one more game to go, but, you know, when you go back home after the end of this tournament, having only been with this team for six weeks, what's the number one thing that you'll be, you know, the most proud of what you accomplished? I think the commitment from the players to try to, to become the team that I'm trying to build with them, um, their mentality every day to try to learn and push and grow and, and, um, you know, like the intensity that I'm trying to get them to play at and all of those things has, has been really positive, really positive. So, you know, this will be the, the, I think when I, you know, I'm learning to be a national team coach too, by the way. So one of the nice things will be that, that we'll ha I'll have a break and I'll be able to evaluate things clearly. And then I'll be able to think about, okay, how, what are the next steps and how are we going to continue to build this so that, you know, we get stronger each time we're together. It's a good oh, question. In Spanish, please. Spanish. Yeah. Sí. Se lo vio discutir mucho con Rodrigo de Paul. ¿Se puede saber qué se dijeron? Porque después de que Rodrigo de Paul haya recibido una falta, usted se acercó ahí en la vera del terreno y le dijo algo. ¿Se puede saber qué se dijeron? Sí, yeah, just asked him if he was okay. I said, are you okay? And he said, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. He said he was okay. It's good. To, I was happy that he was okay. Jesse, right there, Henry Bushnell from Yahoo Sports. Um, you talked at the beginning about, you know, early in the game when you guys were seemed like you were sturdier than you were in the first game. How do you think you were able to slow them down and make it so difficult for them to to play through you, especially before the goal? Yeah, no, I mean the first fifteen, maybe maybe not quite twenty, but the first fifteen minutes when we seemed to have more legs, we we pressed them and we caused them issues and we created some turnovers and then some half chances and maybe if one of those goes in, the game's a little bit more interesting. Um, So yeah, there, that was a positive. That was a big positive. I, I told them, you know, and then, and then I felt, I felt a little bit that once we went one nil down that a few too many guys were trying individual plays and I call it freestyling instead of sticking to the plan. So that was one of the things we talked at a half and, and yeah, so we've got to learn from that moment so that it, even when the games are tough that we stick to the plan.
Jesse Andrew Jones would leave Network. You were dangerous to them two times at the end of the match, even without having Afonso, Jonathan, and Stefan on the field. And you mentioned the subs playing as well as they did from Tanny to Ali to also everyone else that came on, and not Jonathan as well, too. Are you even more delighted with what you saw at the end of the game and how it could have been 2 2 if things yeah. fell in the way? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I and that, that was, look, I could tell, so when you when we talked about the first 15, 20 minutes, I could tell that at about the 18th minute that we were tired, right? And that there were a lot of miles on the legs on the pitch. And 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 I kind you know, the reason that I played one of the reasons I played Ishmael and not Oso was trying to get some fresh legs on the pitch and 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 that Ishmael can play with power. And, you know, I I said to the team, maybe I could have you know, rotated a few other guys, but I really felt like that that group had really earned the opportunity to try to compete to get to the final. Um, but to again, like we said, to to see the the subs come on and perform really well is a really positive sign and a real positive development for us. And and I think some of those guys will get uh, a, a chance from the start on Saturday. Coach Michael Batista, Hudson River Blue. Just going, you still have one more game left in this tournament. Arguably third place in the Copa America could be one of Canada's biggest accomplishments yeah. since winning the Gold Cup in 2000. Going after this loss, how do you and your team reset and focus on a third place game like that? Yeah, I mean, I always think it's a little bit odd for the, to have the third place match in these tournaments because, you know, nobody, fans aren't really that interested and, and teams are, are disappointed, you know, to play in that match. But for us, it's important. Because it's an opportunity for us to continue to work on some things, and and certainly, like I said, I'll inv we'll invest some time from the start with some different different uh, faces, which will be good. That'll be a, an opportunity for us. Hey, Jesse Romblum from AP. Two things. First, what is Alfonso's condition? He's getting an X-ray, so we're hopeful he's okay, but we're not sure. And what are the challenges in building your team for the next two years where the only competitive matches you have are a couple of Nations League weekends and then probably the Gold Cup without Europe-based players? Yeah, we, you're right. Those are some challenges. But we will we'll build a program where we try to emphasize how important those matches are. And we'll, we'll, we'll try to find the best opponents we can find. And obviously, it's not tournament play. You're right. They're friendlies. But we're going to still take everything we can out of all those moments. And 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 again, it's one of the reasons why doing well in this tournament was so important for the, the start of our process. And I couldn't, you know, I took this job seven weeks ago. <laughs> I couldn't have imagined that we would, I'd be right here right now, right? So I'm really happy with the team and really happy with the progress. Pardeep Khatri, CBS Sports, you obviously talked about how you've made it further than you anticipated. What do you think you need to work on to ensure that you meet, you, that you continue on these high expectations you've already set yeah. you know, for, by the time the World Cup comes around and even after the fact? Creating a broader player pool will be important and then continuing to work on the details of how we're going to play. But we're in a really, we're off to a really good start. Off to a really good start. Last okay. question. Hi, Jesse. Yeah. Uh, Matthews, Daily Mail. I just wondered, from what you've seen early on and, and the results and the performances against some of the teams way, way higher in the rankings, what do you consider the ceiling for this team to be over the next few years? It's a little hard to say now, but, but I'm certainly um, more sure now than I was when we got started. And, you know, I said, um, I said after like two days of training, I looked at the staff and I said, look, we could be in for a tough month. Uh, you know, I thought maybe we we could go zero and five given the opponents that we played against. Um, we didn't, which was good. Um, we performed well in most of those matches, which was good. Um, and so we're way ahead already of of where I would have thought we could possibly be. And and I'm thankful to have the opportunities to play the opponents that we've played because it's made us much stronger. And we will definitely use it to help us grow and develop and build confidence in what we're doing. Thank you. Many thanks.